Hey gang, Scott Davenport here and welcome to Impost. Thanks for joining me today. Well, today's session is a live edit, live in air quotes. So I'm not live streaming this, but what I am doing is turning on record and editing a photo I've never worked on start to finish. And so we may have some wrong turns, some backtracking. Hopefully we emerge with a pretty good photo, but I'll share what's going through my head as I'm making certain choices along the way. So these videos tend to be a little longer than my other ones, uh, but you know, it's really, this is my process and you get to uh, get to see this. If this is the type of video that you like, you may want to support me on Patreon. One of the things I'm thinking about doing over there is doing live edits, but of your photos. So you'd send me a photo and I would record a live edit and share it just to our Patreon members. So if that's something that uh, you might want to get in on, head on over to my Patreon site. And so with that, let's take a look at this photo here. Now this is one that I captured from in the field earlier this week. And I posted a video last week that showed some of the culling that went into this. Why did I pick this one over some of the others? So you get some thought process there as to why I chose this one. But now starting the editing process, looking at the photo, and the first thing I always do is an image assessment. And generally speaking, I'm pretty happy with what I see here. It's a little dark, it's a little uh, underexposed. And uh, part of that challenge is when you start the exposure, usually I'm metering and all the whitewash isn't there. And as it comes in, uh, I don't get the uh, as much exposure as I'd want to. So we can see that that's, you know, that's underexposed there. We'll also be opening that up. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this seawall straight away. Just, just crop that in. And skimming around the border, there's like a little tiny something or other down here at the bottom that needs to be brushed away. And then after that, I really just want to accentuate the surf, make that a little brighter, play up the cooler tones of this scene. And after that, I really don't know what's going to happen. We're going to see see what what happens here. So let's just start off with the crop. Let's get let's take care of the crop straight away. So we'll tug this in from the right hand side, right up to the edge of that seawall. I'm good with a, a bit of the rock being there. That's fine. And I think I want to pan that up. You know, as a matter of fact, my cropping. Maybe I'll just take care of this little bit here because this sweep is what I really really want, and that's nice. It's actually following right along that golden spiral I happen to have on the, the crop overlay. And let's check the angle. If I do an auto on that slight correction, that looks about correct. Recheck the pan there a little bit. Did we pick up any more of that seawall from the crop? Here's a little tip for Lightroom. I'm going to press the L key twice. And what that's doing is it's getting rid of all the displays, but I can still operate my crop. So I can really get a good idea of what this scene is going to look like. And I'm playing around with what's on this right edge. Do I want to get rid of that other piece there? I think I'll leave that there, give some breathing room, maybe brush it away. L key one more time, enter for the crop. And uh, let's double check this little thing down here. Tiny little distraction, Q key. We'll just, uh, looks like that was a, a clone choice, but it did a really good job because I forgot where I clicked already. And if that's... Uh, that's what happens then it means it's blending in great I don't have to worry about that all right let's uh, let's do the hard target search here actually let me zoom back in pan back up to the top corner I'm gonna to toggle on and off this visualize spots button here this is this right down here in your toolbar with the a key and I'm just looking for things that could be construed as a spot usually a does not help me so much in all of the whitewash because there's just too much contrast going on through there so I'm just going to skim through the scene. If you're wondering what I'm doing with the keyboard, on a Mac, if I do a function and then down arrow, I'm moving to like the next segment of the photo. On a PC or a Windows machine, that would be the page down key. I'm just going to just get rid of that spot. That's not really adding to my story. One more time here. Now this is where I want to decide what to do about this. Let's try taking it out. Let's try taking it out. We'll reduce the feather a little bit. And let's see if we can just get Lightroom to pick something. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Let's do a second follow-up on that. And then kind of just fill that in. Ooh, that last one was not good. Let's switch over to healing and do things there. That one was not good. We'll undo that. Maybe. All right, we'll have to do it the hard way. Lightroom is choosing something. Oh, it's choosing this rock way out here. Let's have it choose something else closer to these, these grassier tones. 
too high. Dial that down into there, perhaps. All right, that's that's pretty good. Um, maybe one more cleanup because I'm just I want to get a good beach line on uh, on on this one here. So raise that up. Let me change this tool to just the selected item. That will be cleaner. I can see what's going on here. Let's see. H key to turn that off and on. I need some more feather on that. That's going to be blending better. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good. That's looking pretty all right. Um, and as I'm close up here, I can see my crop is a little bit off. So I'm going to revisit the crop and tug that in just a little bit more. Okay, and that's better. Finishing off retouching. Let's take care of this little bit of seaweed or kelp. Finish off going down through the bottom. Don't see anything else that is majorly distracting. Of course, as soon as I zoom away, I see this. I kind of ignored it before, and now it bothers me. <laughs> One of the challenges of retouching you start to clean up things and then the little tiny bits that you didn't clean up, suddenly those are the things you need to clean up. <clears throat> Iterative process. I'm going to leave the swimmers there. You know, this, this whole area here gives some, some scale and some context. So I think we'll be done with retouching. Let's move on to the basics. Uh, I'll start with just the profiles and I tend to check vivid and landscape and i have to say landscape usually is the one i land on just does a little bit more with the blues and there's some hints of oranges up here um as as cloud covered as the sky was there was that open band at the horizon although the sun was setting off to camera left that's not bad we know we have to uh expose this better so let's bring that up matter of fact let's just hit the auto button and see how we do here that's actually quite nice that's quite nice Something that changed in one of the recent updates to Lightroom Classic CC is contrast used to get crushed as part of this, this uh, auto button. And now they're doing something a little more sensible. I still, still uh, tend to visit it just to make sure I've got everything in there. But that is looking way better. Just before and after really quick on that. Before and after. Much nicer. This almost, this almost takes on like an afternoon feel to it. Uh, let's play around now with texture and clarity. Now texture is going to hit things that are in the mid-tone areas and clarity is a harder edged tool. So that's, that's, that's less of what I want. I, I kind of like what texture is doing. It's, it's adding, it's adding something. That's for sure. Before and after it's crispening up on the, the ocean a little bit. This is kind of the problem of this, this whole scene is just how empty this is. So I'm already thinking when I do some type of vignetting to bias that toward the right hand side to really draw the eye across this diagonal. This is where the story is. And I want to do something with the color in the sky too, but we're getting there. Let's see. Um, like the vibrance, let's nudge it a little bit more and I'm going to take that back and instead do that with HSL like to get some of these um, these nuances of the different blues and these aqua greens, you know, getting some difference in there. So right now I'm just hovering over various areas and I'm watching the HSL panel to see what color or colors does Lightroom think that is. So this is squarely in the greens, we're still in the greens out here. Then we're into blues. This is more, this is more the aquas. Okay, that wasn't green, that was aqua. This is certainly going to be blue. That'll be in the orange or yellow band. And so would the beach. So if uh, I start messing around with orange and yellows, I can expect the beach, certainly this foreground rock, probably these guys as well to pop up. All right, let's play with a little bit of green first. So we'll nudge green up and that's going to get a little more punch and color there and I'll push it really far with the with playing green down. You can see how deep that's getting. That's fundamentally adding color contrast, right? We've got bright white. If I take the greens darker, it's giving a little more punch to that. Let's do the blues. When it get blues, we'll see most of that up in the sky. And I'll do the same thing. We'll we'll nudge down the darkness a little bit. So that's just adding some color contrast, getting some punch up there. That's cool. Visit the oranges. So if I nudge orange, I'm watching a few places right now. I'm watching the beach. I'm watching the rocks and the horizon. And let's pull that back. Put it back up somewhere in between there. 
is a it's a subtler touch. Um, what else do we want to do with? And this was the yellow area. So if I take the yellows and nudge that toward orange, that's going to affect the horizon line. Let's take a before and after look at HSL. That's before those changes, and that's after. So subtle. Uh, if this is one of the first live edit videos you've watched or any of my videos, I tend to have a, a subtle touch with a lot of different tools, and it adds up to you know the overall look of the photo. So if not all of these things are coming through on compressed internet video, um, I do apologize for that. You can see the changes happening in the sky and in the ocean here. I'll do that one more time. Toggle off and then toggle back on. Okay, um, moving on. What else to do with this? I would like the surf in the area that I want my viewer to look to have more punch. So I think as I scroll down through here, let's take a look just at detail from the point of view of kind of, uh, I'll call it rock detail and, and, and shadow detail. Holding down the option or alt key and sliding up masking, we'll start to see stuff disappear. And this will be the more uniform areas. So things that have white on them will be the areas that get sharpened and that's gonna add in a bit of detail and so that's mostly going to be rocks and buildings, hints on the waves. So let's push that to there. And then let's, um, let me pan over to something we'll be able to see more obvious with the edges there. If I push the sharpening really far, we can see that sharpened really crisp. I don't want to push too far. That introduces halos. So this is mainly just crispening these edges around the rocks. That one, boy, if that comes through on the video, you've got like an incredible resolution <laughs> coming through to you on the, uh, the, the pipe through the internet here. Let's move on to, uh, to getting a little more uh, targeted touch to this area of the surf. So first thing I'm doing is just kind of rotating this, this radial generally in the direction that I have my leading line. Um, and let's expand it out a little bigger than I might normally do because there'll be a feather in here. If I hover over this, you'll see first off that I'm affecting outside of the radial. I like to work with my radials affecting what's inside them. And we can see that starts to taper off toward the edges. So two things we want to do here. I don't want to change exposure. Exposure is fine. I do want to, let's nudge clarity. because that's, that's going to give some punch. I'm going to push it really far can see what's going on. That's really, really adding a lot of uh, local contrast and detail right into the center area there. Um, what I really want to target though is the ocean. Let's do a color range mask because this will be largely blue. Okay, and we'll turn on our overlay and we'll see what it's affecting. So it's getting the nice parts of the surf. The rocks are not getting touched. Now we can extend this uh, this bubble here, I can even move it down this way and start to get more of the surf effect. If I increase the color range, we'll see more of that water getting impacted. Let's, uh, let's extend out a little bit farther. That'll pick up some of this channel in the rock here and some over there. Turn off our mask so we can see what's going on. And now we'll start fine tuning. So if I add a little more texture and a little more contrast, I'm really trying to punch up that bit of surf and a very slight nudge on the exposure. Let me push it far so you can see what happens. It's getting really, really, that's blown out, of course. But this is effectively doing a dodge on these white caps here. So before that elliptical filter, and then after, very subtle change, but I like it. Now something a little more dramatic for this area, and we'll do that with a graduated filter. I'll just drag this up to this area here, feather it out some. Around there's looking pretty good. We're affecting the lower half. We can see that it's gotten darker because the exposure is what's set. So let's not do exposure, and let's just do a little bit of general contrast, just a bit. And we'll ride that texture again. 
and clarity. So I didn't like clarity overall for the scene, but for this area here, I do like it. Let's see before. Need Lightroom to catch up with me. After. I'll take it. Um, now, this will become a little more playtime. Let's try Let's do playtime. What I'm looking at is the sky. And so there is this yellow-orange band out at the horizon. What if we were to say, well, all right, this, let's say the sun was out there and the sun was going to illuminate the underside of these clouds. What could we do there? What kind of changes could, could happen? So let's go ahead and visit that what-if scenario. Back over to the radial tool. I'll throw this up on the sky here, invert it, and let's stretch that out. And let's say the sun was, was going to peek through right about here, okay? So I'm just kind of lining this up with, let's assume the sun was there and it was starting to shoot a whole bunch of wonderfully golden light up toward the top of this scene here. So we'll bias this up really far up here. Turn that off. We have it inverted. I want to do a luminance mask. So I want to start seeing where would we expect light to hit. And if I want it to be the orangey type areas, it's going to be the brighter areas in those clouds. Let's take the smoothing down. Ah, smoothing there is good, okay. Now let's take the smoothing down some. Or not down, up some. Smooth that out a little bit. We're starting to see some more of the nuance in those clouds. And imagine it's the red parts that we're seeing here that are taking on a, a color, you know, uh, of, well, what I'm about to introduce here in a moment. So uh, we're going to do basically like a color filter for this. We can do it a couple of ways. We have temperature. I'm going to push that very far and you'll see what's going on with the clouds, right? So, you know, nudging that off, we're introducing a tiny bit of warmth, but nuanced, right? This particular cloud here, if I hover over that again, where it was dark, it's not getting that effect. You can see more of that darkness there. Uh, the other option we have is we actually have a color overlay. And we can say, let's get some orange on that thing. If I drop orange in there, what do we do? If I push that saturation, that orange higher, what happens? Um, that's probably too much. Bring that down. And now I need to play the game of let's put the sun where it really would have been, like maybe here and start to fade this in both directions. Notice how it's getting a lot warmer in the center here. Um, that's looking like you know muddy, sandy water, not particularly pleasing. Uh, so I certainly don't want that for this look. Let's crush that back up there, maybe around there. Fade that back up. I think I'll just brush it away from this area here. I do not need the auto mask. I'm just going to remove that from the ocean part. I just, I just don't need that. This is, this is, um, I think this experiment is starting to fail. And the problem for me is it's, it's going to end up looking unnatural. What would happen if this really were a sun coming in underneath these clouds? Well, the clouds would have this nice orange amber glow to them and that would be reflecting down to the ocean and so some of that would be bouncing around on here but because the ocean is uh, just it's just you know it doesn't have the same you know uh tonality uh and i'd have to do a second uh second filter to maybe make this work but in the end it's just it's just not really uh it's not really adding a lot to to the scene i'm going to take that away and i i think the subtleties of it as it is, is more pleasing than trying to artificially add in any color there. So that was an experiment, didn't really work out, and, and that's okay. You know, it's it's worth trying those things. These are techniques that you can tuck away in your head for uh, for future use. Oh, actually, I want to stay in that radio because I think the last thing I'm going to do here for this one, finishing it off with a vignette, but I want it off-center. I can't do an off-center vignette in Lightroom's uh, standard tool, but I can do it with a radial. So we have an exposure. This is actually how I want it. So this is kind of like a spotlight. If I hover over here, we'll see all this red on the outside. So everything outside of the radial 
is getting a drop in exposure. And so we'll just kind of position that right about there. And we can see the before and after, turn off the exposure, turn back on the exposure. It's a little bit dark, so maybe nudge that back off. Or um, I can also just extend out that feathering there a little bit. Uh, that's pretty good let me tell you uh, let's see how we did here let's see a before and after so this is the backslash key this is what we started with this is what we finished with um all in all i'm i'm happier with that i think maybe a final a final touch new brush uh exposure of 30 let's let's um let's go ahead and start with that and i just want to downplay a little bit more over here just kind of doing a little bit of a burn right down over there let's see that might have been too much. Let's turn off that brush and back on again before and after. A little bit much. So we'll adjust that to maybe just a, a tenth. And once again, it's just really, let's turn that done, really just accentuating. This is the interesting part of the photo. This is the story and everything else is contextual. So one last time, let's see before and after. I think we're going to call this one done. As a tip of the week, I think it's experiment. Don't be afraid to try something out. I tried this thing out with the radio filter, trying to throw in a you know additional color cast to select parts of the clouds. You know, and it didn't work out, but I tried it and it was worthwhile. Right? I wouldn't have known if I didn't try. So don't be afraid to experiment. It's the beauty of non-destructive editing. Try a couple of things. You invest a couple of minutes, and maybe it works out, maybe it doesn't. Either way, uh, for me, it's always good practice to, uh, to work on the techniques and tuck that away and use it for a different day. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know somehow. Comments below. You got questions about photography, hit me up in the comments. You want to keep it private, send me a message through my website. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport, and happy shooting.